there, this is Mrs. Often with yet another math video. Today's video is about operations with functions. Now if you're in my A-week classes, you probably saw a video about operations with functions that had a really excited guy with exciting looking hair. Um, that's not this video. If you want to be really excited, you can go watch this video instead. The link is on our class page. But this is mine, and it's done all in green marker. So, uh, go Celtics. So, today's functions that are featured in our operations with functions video are f of x equals x squared plus 2x, and g of x equals 2x minus 8. So, a quadratic function and a linear function. Both of them have a domain of all real numbers. So, we're going to start off with adding and subtracting. I just would like you to note the way that we write these um, functions. I can write f of x plus g of x, or I can write f plus g of x. Both of them mean the same thing. Add your two functions together. So in order to do this, I'm just going to write the functions x squared plus 2x. There's my f of x function. And my g of x function. Now here I'm not going to write them in parentheses, although I certainly could. The only thing that I have to do here is to combine like terms. It's just that easy. My answer is x squared plus 4x minus 8. Now since both my functions had a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity, it turns out that this new function, f plus g of x, will also have a domain of negative infinity to positive infinity. You do not need to evaluate this function for any value of the variable at this time. So that's addition. Pretty simple, I think. Subtraction is similarly easy, but you do have to be careful. Why do you have to be careful? Because if you're working with polynomial functions or anything that has multiple terms in it, you want to remember to subtract everything in your second function. So here I have f of x minus g of x, which again can also be written as f minus g of x. So I'll write out my two functions, and I'm going to put them in parentheses this time. I have x squared plus 2x minus 2x minus 8. Now I hope that you'll recall from Algebra 1 that when we subtract something that's in parentheses, we're really adding the opposite. Yeah, you remember that rule for adding integers? Of course you do. So what I'm going to do here is change this from a subtraction problem to an addition problem where I add the opposite. Change the subtraction to addition, and I'll say I'm going to add the opposite of 2x, negative 2x. I'm going to add the opposite of negative 8, I'm going to add positive 8. So notice how this is just changed to the opposite of what it was up above. Now I'm back to the same story. I'm just combining like terms. x squared doesn't have anything. 2x and negative 2x, well, those. Um, add up to zero. So now I have x squared plus 8. Okay, and I'll be able to write that 8 correctly. This is f minus g of x. Just like with real numbers, with polynomial functions and all other functions, the order matters. So f of x minus g of x is different from g of x minus f of x. OK, multiplication. We can write f of x times g of x, or we can write f times g of x. Either notation means the same thing. So working with our same two functions, again, I'm going to write them in parentheses, x squared plus 2x times 2x minus 8. 
Okay, so now I'm just going to multiply these using the distributive property. I get 2x cubed minus 8x squared plus 4x squared minus 16x. And now I'm going to combine like terms to the greatest extent possible. 2x cubed, no like term for that. Negative 8x squared and 4x squared together are negative 4x squared and then minus 16x. This is my final answer. Again, I am not evaluating it for anything. Just leaving it like this. Don't need to even factor it. Isn't that good news? Hey, you. Okay. Our final operation is division. So we can write this as a ratio, either of the two functions, or we can write f over g and then of x next to it. So generally what I'm going to be asking you to do is to just write that ratio, x squared plus 2x divided by 2x minus 8. So as I look at this, I notice that as usual, I've come across a problem because now I have a rational function. My domain was negative infinity to positive infinity with both of these, but now I've got x in the denominator. So that means the denominator of a fraction cannot be equal to 0, and therefore 2x minus 8 cannot be equal to 0. Through the magic of algebra, I solve this and find out x cannot be equal to 4. So my domain is all real numbers except 4. 4, 4. You're left out. So I'm going to write this using the interval notation. There's my number smaller than 4. Of course, united with my numbers greater than 4. That's all you're losing. Division will almost always change the domain. In the cases of addition, subtraction, multiplication, you're generally going to go with the most restrictive domain. We'll talk more about this in class, but in division you really have to be careful. Finally, we can evaluate. So previously, we had found that f plus g was equal to x squared plus 4x minus 8. So this is f plus g of x. Well, if I want to find f plus g of 6, now I can just substitute 6 into these. New equation. So I'm going to evaluate f plus g of 6. And that's going to be equal to 6 squared plus 4 times 6 minus 8. Or 36 plus 24 minus 8. So overall I have 60 minus 8. My final answer is 52. F plus G of 6 is 52. Now if it makes your life easier, you could also have evaluated the f function for 6, the g function for 6, and then added your two answers together. I hope that this video has helped you to better understand operations with functions addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Thanks, and I'll see you again later.